All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's Register on Track uh, session for the Faculty of Engineering. We are glad you can join us for tonight's session. Uh, we're gonna give it another minute or so to let people file into the room as they're just getting logged in. I do see the numbers going up, so that is great. We have a wonderful uh, panel and a presentation coming up uh, to uh, go over the basics of registering for the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, so I'm just going to pause for another 30 seconds here, and then we'll get formally started. All right, so I think the number has topped out here. So we're gonna get uh, things going to kind of get through a lot of stuff that we have to share tonight. So I don't wanna delay too much in the start time. So just an introduction of myself first. My name is Chris Vickers and I work at the Registrar's Office at Dalhousie University. Um, so my role is to support students in the recruitment and admission side of things uh, up until they really get to this point in time, which is about registration for their, for their program. Uh, so tonight's session is going to be all about how to register on track for a set, which is coming up very, very shortly for most of you in the room tonight. Um, before we get things formally kicked off, and I pass it over to my to the host really for the evening, just a couple of housekeeping things to keep in mind as you're going through tonight's session. Uh, as a webinar here, we are able to ask put questions in the Q and A function down in Zoom here. So we would ask that you put all of your questions for anyone whether or not it's about your program registration, uh, any questions you have at this point to kind of get yourself started off on the right foot, to put them in the Q&A, and then one a member of the panel here tonight will answer that for you. Some questions may be left to the end if they're a general interest, so we will get to all the questions in the Q&A, but we have a team here right in the background that can help with answering those questions. If you're having any difficulties with the uh, with the Zoom itself, or you're having audio issues or video, that kind of stuff, you can put that in the chat feature, and I'll try to uh, troubleshoot those things for you. Uh, but uh, keep it in mind that we are going to be condensed to a certain amount of time. So the, night, the big thing is here is that we also are going to be recording this session tonight. So if you do have to miss parts of it, we will post a link on the Register on Track page after tonight's session as well, too. So I'll leave my part at that and I will pass it over to my colleague, Tara, who will take us away. Go ahead, Tara. Thanks so much, Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Tara Duncan and I'm going to be walking you through registration today. Uh, but first, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are all treaty people. We also recognize the African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kmaq known as Nova Scotia for over 400 years. My name is Tara Duncan, uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I am a student success advisor in the Bissett Student Success Centre here at Dalhousie. I've worked in, worked in post-secondary for over 17 years. I've got a combined honours degree in journalism and early modern studies from the University of King's College and a Master of Fine Arts and Creative Nonfiction from Dalhousie University. I've been with the Bissett Student Success Centre since it opened in 2017, and when I'm not at work, I enjoy adventure travel. I've been to 26 different countries and counting. I just got back from uh, Mexico where I had the pleasure of touring Chichen Itza as well as the temples of Tulum. So if you love to travel, I can talk about travel all day. Come and have a visit to me. As previously mentioned, I am an advisor within the Bissett Student Success Center, and we offer a number of supports to students. We have advising services, so we can help you identify skill building opportunities and help you develop action plans if you're struggling in school. We also have career services who help with online resources and one-on-one -on -one supports for those seeking jobs. Um, we also help you figure out how to make yourself more marketable to your chosen field. We have some wonderful peer advisors, one of who you'll hear from today. Um, they can assist with resume and cover letters, as well as job and graduate school interview prep. And then we've got a studying for success division, and they can really help with tutoring, coaching service, and they offer wonderful study skills workshops if you're finding that you're struggling with something. And students do tend to do better in university when they seek supports often and early. And so that's something that we certainly would encourage you to do over your time at Dalhousie. 
The BISIT Student Success Center provides advising support to engineering students transitioning from high school into their first year, especially since you're up on the Maid Studley campus with us for much of your first year. Um, but then advisors uh, on the engineering campus will assist students in second year and beyond, as well as students who are currently transfer students. So if you have any transfer students in the audience today, you'll want to get in touch with Jason um, for a little bit of course selection assistance. And uh, you'll be hearing a little bit more from Jason a little bit later. There we go. Um, I'd like to now invite Karen Hemsworth from the Faculty of Engineering to say a few words about advising supports on the engineering campus, um, because we're not the only people, uh, the Business Student Success Center, who provide supports. There's a number of supports on the engineering campus as well. And so Karen's going to talk to you a little bit about that. Thank you, Tara. So hi, I'm Karen Hemsworth. As Tara said, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I um, work on student support for engineering students. Um, I usually focus on um, domestic students. And Justin, one of my colleagues, if he wanted to turn his camera on for a second, Justin takes care of international students primarily, and um, we work really closely together. So uh, a lot of what we do is student support. Um, we have a student affairs um, committee um, built up of first year students from each of the different blocks. You'll hear more about the blocks in a little bit. Um, it's a student voice. So if you're having problems with one of your courses or if there's something um, that you think is going really great, you, um, you can sign up for the Student Affairs Committee and um, use your, your voice to speak for your fellow students. I work really closely with student leaders. Uh, Nye is on this um, call also. Uh, Nye is uh, entering second year as an engineering student. Um, if you have any questions about what student life is like, I think um, questions should go to Naya for that. Um, I work really closely with the BISIT uh, team, the Black Advising Center, the Indigenous Student Center, Accessibility Services. Um, so basically my job is to help engineering students stay in school. Um, same with Justin and a lot of us. That's what we, we just wanna be there to support you throughout your, your career as an engineering student. So um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, but I'm going to stick around and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Tara. Thank you so much to Justin and Karen. So this is going to be our agenda for the evening. Um, we're going to take you through the formal portions of this presentation. And then at the end, if you have any questions, we will leave some space open for you to ask those questions. And speaking of getting you in the mindset of asking questions, here are some things that we think you can reflect on over the course of the session, as well as over the summer. What are you excited about? You know, think about some of the things that brought you to Dalhousie, some of the things that you want to take advantage of, and, you know, start keeping stock of those. Uh, what challenges are you anticipating you might face? Certainly, there may be some sports services that we can provide you to help. And then how do you plan to get the most out of your Dal experience? Feel free to share your answers in the chat. You can also share them with an advisor when you meet with them one-on-one -on -one over the summer or during the fall, so they can help you craft a success plan that supports your needs and builds on your existing strengths and interests. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Daryl Doman uh, to say a few words of welcome from the Faculty of Engineering. Thank you, Tara. Um, I'd like to just start off with welcoming all of our new students. It's a really exciting time, uh, certainly for you, um, but it's also a very exciting time within the faculty. This is when we start gearing up to welcome all of you new students in September, and um, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, maybe I'll give you a little bit of background. Uh, I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies, so basically my job is to look after all of the undergraduate programs in, in engineering. Um, I came to Dell just about 20 years ago to do my PhD, and I became a prof in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, uh, mostly to teach. I fell in love with the teaching, and so my new job sort of is, is just an extension of that, that, that love of teaching and students, and I, I do a lot of different things. I do research, I do administrative duties, uh, but far and away the best part of my job is uh, or are the students. Um, I'd just like to give you a couple of things, just, just uh, as a super broad overview. Um, 
kind of what to expect in first year, uh, kind of writ large, is like any engineering program, first year is a lot of fundamentals. So there's chemistry and physics and sort of fundamental foundational engineering uh, kind of topics are covered. But you're also going to do applied things. You will build a machine in, in first year. And then we strongly believe that getting our hands dirty and being applied engineers is, is sort of what Dow's, Dow's uh, sort of credo is. Um, in terms of supports, you know, I sometimes you hear people say, oh, well, students today are like this, which is, which is really just hogwash. Uh, every student is a unique person. They have different needs at different times. And so as you hear throughout the presentation, there are a whole variety of supports that are available. And you pick the one that best suits you at the time that you need it. And at any time, if you don't know what to do, there are supports where you can just show up and get help to figure out what kind of support you, you do need. Uh, and lastly, I think, you know, our campus is great. It's right downtown. You can walk a couple of streets down and you're right on the water. And the student life is great. Um, that, that picture there with the students holding their, their hands up, my office is in that red building right there. And I see all the students playing soccer and holding barbecues and events. Uh, it's a really fantastic place and I think you're really going to enjoy. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Tara to continue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dillman. And you're so right. The, the student experience is, is such a prime part of what Dalhousie has to offer. And we have got someone amazing here today to talk to us a little bit about what student supports uh, are like and getting to know your campus a little more. Um, so right now, I would like to call on Charlie, who is a peer advisor in our office, to come and just talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be a student on campus. Uh, so Charlie, take it away. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much, Tara. Um, so yeah, my name is Charlie. I use they, them pronouns. And um, yeah, I work as a peer advisor at the Visit Student Success Center, uh, where Tara is an academic advisor. And um, so I came to Dalhousie as a transfer student. I actually started at a different university. I came here in my second year. And so I actually went, Tara, this is very nice to be doing this presentation with Tara because she was my academic advisor. So I joined her on the Stay on Track program at the uh, Visit Student Success Center. And she really helped me kind of, you know, pave a way at Dalhousie. And yeah, I can't thank her enough for that. And um, so I actually, you know, got involved on campus in a variety of ways. One thing was that I uh, have ADHD and I had an individual education plan at, uh, you know, in high school in my previous, um, you know, uh, institution. So uh, I went to the Accessibility Center and uh, was able to access, the support, uh, you know, accommodations and supports through them. Uh, another place that uh, I got involved with was South House, which is um, kind of a gender and sexuality resource uh, house on campus. And I helped organize their library, which was very fun. Um, and I got involved with um, kind of student work on campus uh, by getting a summer job at the registrar's office. There's a lot of just kind of clerk work, um, you know, a uh, lot goes on at the registrar's office behind the scenes. So uh, that was a really good foot in the door. And then the next year I applied at the visit center uh, to be a peer advisor. And uh, here I am for my second year um, doing these presentations. And yeah, it's just really nice to uh, welcome new students. So I personally am a Bachelor of Arts student. Um, I know that we have uh, Naya on the call who is an engineering student and can speak to that kind of student experience. Um, but it's also, you know, a good opportunity to um, kind of be interdisciplinary and take courses as your electives um, to kind of round out your education. So uh, one of my favorite courses that I've taken is um, for my creative writing minor uh, was Introduction to Creative Writing. Um, it's just a general, you know, you probably all need a writing credit. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was just a general um uh, you know, all encompassing. We did poetry, we did playwriting, uh, you know, it was run by a very talented uh, playwright here in Halifax, um, 
uh, Shantae Grant. Uh, and um, yeah, another th course that I'd recommend is a lot of people don't know about the history of science and technology courses at King's. And um, I approach that as a social science student, but I you know, remember there being like engineering students and biology students in those courses. And it was a really great like kind of interdisciplinary opportunity there. Um, so yeah, some options for courses there. And uh, my advice for students is uh, just take advantage of the supports that are available uh, to you through the school. Uh, you know, I remember thinking like, you know, oh, I'm a second year, I'm transferring here. Like, I bet there's first years who really need these services, like I'm taking up their time. But it's like, no, those services are there for you. That's, you know, um, all these people on this call, you know, want to help you out. So yeah, anyway, I'll be back to talk about student supports in a few minutes. Um, and I'll pass it back to Tara. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Charlie, and we look forward to having you back in just a moment. Um, and as Charlie said, during the Q&A session, we will have Naya Lupik, who is the president of the Diploma in Engineering Society. Um, and Naya can actually uh, speak to questions about what it's like to be a student in the program. So we're uh, incredibly lucky to have uh, her with us today. Um, so next on our list, we're going to go through some of the details of course registration, the big reason why most of us, I think, are here today. DAL.ca slash registration is going to be your main source of information concerning registration. If you remember nothing else from the webinar today, um, write this down or pull it up on your computer and bookmark it so you can check it out later. This page contains quick links to registration videos, um, as well as other quick links, such as the course planning worksheets, important terms, and so much more. So first, we're going to start by going over step one, which is before you begin. Before you start picking courses, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have paid your $200 admission deposit. This confirms your seat and allows you to access the registration system on June 10th. Next, you need to activate your NetID and password at password.dal.ca. That allows you to log into DAL online where you actually register for classes. Then you need to set up Dalhousie email through dal.ca slash email. A lot of the stuff that we send over the summer and all of the information on orientation is going to be sent to your Dalhousie email address. So it's important that you check it regularly or that you forward it to an email address that you do check regularly. We also recommend that you bookmark our important dates page, which is dal.ca slash dates, so that you know key dates such as the first day of class, um, the deadline to add or drop courses, when exams start, when your breaks are, and so much more. And finally, we recommend that you review our student checklist at dal.ca slash new students. It'll help you prepare for coming to join us in the fall, which we're very excited to have you for. Next, I thought I would clarify some terminology that you're going to be hearing over the course of, uh, of your time with registration uh, and just your time at DAL. So a net ID is a term you're going to hear a lot. You can find your NetID by going to password.dal.ca and clicking on Activate Your NetID. Your NetID is used to log into DAL Online, which is the registration system, uh, your Dalhousie email account, as well as Brightspace, which you'll use, you'll use during the regular academic year to uh, access your course syllabi and also to upload your assignments. Your net ID is the first two letters of your name minus vowels followed by numbers. So an example would be CH123456. Your net ID is actually different from your student number. Sometimes called a B00 number or a BOO, it can be found on your acceptance letter. This number allows support staff such as myself to either book you appointments to come in or to access your record when needed. Um, so your net ID and your B00 number or your BOO are things that you will come to know uh, off by heart before too long. Okay, now that you know how to activate your net ID and password, we can discuss how to find your courses. You'll start by going to dal.ca slash registration. By clicking on step two, you're going to find quick links to our course planning worksheets. There is a couple, or there's a course planning worksheet really for every faculty at Dalhousie. Um, so you can go ahead and select the first link under the Faculty of Engineering tab, Bachelor of Engineering First Year Courses. This will bring you to your personal course planning worksheet. 
The worksheet has a lot of useful information, so I do encourage you to check it out. It contains a list of the courses you're going to take by term, as well as links to the First Year Engineering Handbook. The First Year Handbook contains everything you need to know to ensure you have a successful first year in engineering uh, and beyond, so I strongly encourage you to check it out. Chris is actually going to pop it into the chat for us, um, and so I recommend maybe just clicking on it at some point during this session and, uh, and just bookmarking it so that you can go back and, and check it out after. If you look closely at the worksheet here, to returning to the worksheet, um, you'll see that it tells you the names and numbers of the classes and lets you know the class format. Most courses will have a lecture accompanied by a lab or tutorial or both. This sheet actually outlines exactly what each course is going to entail, so it's certainly worth checking out. Let's go over some important terms. Uh, a lecture. A lecture is your main point of contact with a professor. It's often the pre professor presenting a large amount of information to the larger group. Um, uh, there's less one on one interaction associated with a lecture um, and a little bit uh, uh, you know, more group engagement. Um, a lab is typically run by a teaching assistant or TA. The class size is usually much smaller and the learning is more hands on. And then in a tutorial format, it's typically run again by a TA. Um, it's a much smaller group, and it normally is a lot of discussion-based problem solving within small groups. If you have a lecture that has either a lab or a tutorial associated with it, you must register for both the lecture in the lab or the lecture in the tutorial, or in some cases, all three. Um, What's good is you have block registration, so we'll talk about that in, a, in a, a few moments that'll take care of a lot of this for you, but I thought that I would just explain that to you so you sort of understand. Um, so most classes will be a combination of a lecture and a lab. Um, chemistry is an excellent example of that. Some will be a combination of a lecture and a tutorial, so math calls, calls their lab work tutorials, and then some will be a combination of lectures, labs, and tutorials, um, and there's just one uh, in your first year, and physics is an example of that. So now that we've explored first year, I would like to call on the academic advisor for the Faculty of Engineering, my good friend Jason LaCour, to give you a more comprehensive overview of what you can expect in second year and beyond. Thank you very much, Tara. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason LaCour. I'm the undergraduate administrative coordinator for the Faculty of Engineering. Just so you folks are aware, about half of my job is a lot of the background stuff that goes into delivering all the courses and the program. Uh, so things like timetabling and scheduling and helping students and staff and faculty understand the rules and regs at the university. And the other my half of my time is spent talking to students, giving them academic advising, helping them work through the program. So in first year, you're going to be advised primarily by the Bissett Center, but I will be around because I advise all the students in the core program. Uh, and in second year, I will be your primary academic advisor. So I look forward to meeting all of you and working with you over the next couple of years. So part of what I wanted to talk to you about today was just really briefly kind of the structure of the engineering program at Dalhousie. Um, there's a really useful web page, uh, go.engineering.dal.ca slash diploma, which covers a lot of the information you'll need kind of going forward into uh, year, year one and two. Um, and the most important thing to recognize about our program is that it is kind of divided into two halves. There's the first two years, and we're going to call it the first two years, even though it can take three years to do it if you'd like. And then there's years three and four, the upper division of the program. And the way the program works is basically students complete everything in years one and two, and then they move on to years three and four. Everybody takes the same courses in year one. So you're going to take the courses that Dara had listed there, your chemistries, your technical communication, engineering design, computer programming, engineering, math, and physics. Um, and in the winter term, same kind of courses, except you're interjecting statics in place of design and linear algebra in place of programming. So most of you will be able to recognize that's six courses per term. Technically, in first year, it's 5.5 courses per term because technical communications should be half as much work as any other class being a 1.5 credit hour course. But the standard registration in the Faculty of Engineering is six courses per term. And I'll talk on a couple slides later about how to kind of, if you want to take a bit more time, there are ways to do that and to spread that coursework out over a third year. So 
once first year's done, um, students will then move on to second year. Second year in the fall term, again, all engineering students take the same courses. In winter term of year two is when it gets a little bit different for you, depending on the stream of engineering that you're going into. We call the different engineering streams at Dalhousie disciplines. So we have, and I guess I'll get into this on the next slide, but we have, do have six disciplines, environmental, chemical, civil, mechanical, electrical, and industrial engineering. And in the winter term of year two, depending on which program you're doing, your, your, your uh, schedule will differ by your friend's schedule who's doing a different program by three courses. So for the first three terms in engineering, everybody's doing the same thing. In the winter term of year two, that's when you start going down the direction towards your discipline placement. If I could have the next slide. So this is when I should have read out the list of the six different disciplines. And like I said, what the programs we offer at Dalhousie are chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, environmental engineering, industrial engineering, and mechanical engineering. Now within electrical engineering, there are two options in the electrical engineering degree. There's an electrical engineering option and there's a computer engineering option. Obviously the latter focuses a bit more on the computer engineering aspects of electrical engineering. How you do choose these disciplines is basically based on your interest to a great degree. During your first year of engineering, we're going to do our best to give you a lot of exposure to what chemical engineering is all about and what environmental engineering is all about and what mechanical engineering is all about so that you can make that decision. Towards the end of your first year, you're going to apply for your discipline placement. Um, some disciplines do get full. And the way that we kind of ration out the disciplines is based on GPA. So the better you do in your courses in first year, the more likely you are to get into the discipline you want. If you have an engineering GPA 3.5 or higher at the end of the first year, having done all the courses, you will get the discipline that you ask for. Below 3.5 GPA, you'll use GPA to kind of rank students and assign disciplines that way. In general, the ones that are the most competitive tend to be mechanical engineering and civil engineering. But this year, something like 95% of students got their first choice discipline. So as long as you do pretty good in your courses, you should be able to do the type of engineering that you want. If I could have the next slide. So things to know. So this is just basically my wisdom given to you of things that I find students always have questions about when they're in year one and year two. Um, the most absolute most important thing is when we start sending emails out in the new year, right around February 1st, saying you must apply for April for placement in year three by April 30th of your first end of winter term of your first year. Please read those emails. Please make that application because you must hold a year three placement in order to get a, get a placement. You must apply and you can't move on to year three without a placement. I did mention this earlier, but I'll reiterate this as well, that the program is broken down into two parts. The first two years, you're in the Diploma of Engineering program, the lower division, the core program, you'll hear it called all those things. Though the courses in the uh, core program have to be completed before you can move on to year three. That causes some complications in scheduling, so you should work with an advisor when you're building your schedule if you're going to deviate at all from the recommended six courses per term. Um, in order to move from year two to year three, in addition to having all the courses completed, you must have a cumulative GPA of 2.0 or higher in your engineering courses and overall. I'm gonna uh, jump, skip one, and I'm gonna talk about the, if you are going to be following a reduced course load schedule. So I noticed a, a question in the Q&A was, I already know I'm going to be doing uh, the reduced course schedule, what should I take? The answer to that is probably physics, uh, 1190 in the fall, math 1280 in the fall, chemistry 1021 in the fall, and then in the winter term, chemistry, math, and physics again. Okay, so that'd be chem two, math two, and physics 1290. So if you do those three courses in each term, you're going to be in great place to either make a decision in the summer to go, you know what, that wasn't so bad. I'm going to take the courses I didn't take over the summer and catch up to my peers. Or you can say, great, 
that was fantastic. I did well. I'm going to not do much in the summer at all. And I'm going to take a reduced course load the following year, which will be a mix of year one and two courses, the remaining ones. And then in the third year of the two year program, you're just going to take a reduced course load of second year required courses. So it can work really, really well to do the diploma over three years. Um, it's a very good thing if you're if you're not quite certain you want to do the six credit hours or sorry, the six courses per term. There are variations to that reduced course that I, I did mention, doing math, physics, and chemistry. Um, but if you get those three courses done, if you add another course or do something else, it's it's not a big deal. But talk to an advisor either in the visit center or drop me a line. Um, I do hold walk-in advising in the Dunn building, which is a building you as first year engineering students will become very familiar with fairly quickly. I'm there once a week. Uh, last year I was there Tuesday afternoons and I think I'll continue that uh, this year as well. So you'll always be able to be able to just drop in, ask questions one day a week at least in the Dunn building. Uh, and then just kind of some general advice about how to make sure that you get off to a great start as an engineering student. Probably even more so than what you know or your mental abilities, your intellect, um, your skill set, your, your mastery of physics, calculus, and chemistry is going to be your time management, planning, and organizational skills. Um, high school is a very supportive environment, I would say, in terms of that you have a teacher who knows you very, very well. They're always thinking about you. They're always worried about you. They're always he's reminding you of things that you need to do. University is a little bit different than that. And quite frankly, if you all you did was go to classes, you could go to class, never talk to anybody and just leave class. And you could probably go a whole year without anyone learning your name. Um, other than the instructor would know you by a boo number and your work that you're submitting for the class. So as a result, it's really vital that you kind of take ownership of your educational, uh, your education and make sure that you stay on top of everything. So on the first day of class, your instructors are gonna give you a syllabus for the course. That's gonna list everything that you are responsible for in that course. You're gonna to wanna to figure out a way that works for you to help organize that information across all six of your courses so that you know when things are coming due, you know how you have to allocate your time and things will really pick up kind of about three weeks into the term. So the first couple of weeks of the term, they're just gonna be reviewing a lot of stuff you did in high school. My recommendation there would be not to take it easy, but to use that time where you're kind of covering things you, you, you know, or at least you should know, and really put an effort into organization and time management and planning skills. So you know that you got a technical communications paper done at the end of the year. You know how long it is, you know what percentage of your grade is worth. You know when your physics labs are, you know when your chem labs are, when your other major projects, when your design lab is due. Get all that information organized and come up with a way so that when things do start picking up and they will start picking up and many of you will feel the pressure of the course load picking up, that you're ready for it, you're prepared and you're not gonna run into any surprises. So with that, I will turn it back over to Tara and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have at the end of the session. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, so yeah, now that we have a sense of what courses you're gonna be taking in your first year and how that feeds into second year and beyond, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to choose your schedule. Uh, all first year engineering students are going to register using block registration. So rather than registering for individual classes like everybody else has to, you'll register for all of your classes all at once, which is wonderful. Blocks are pre-made schedules that are conflict free and will include all of your first year requirements. So all lectures, tutorials and labs will automatically fit together. There are eight blocks to choose from each term, and they all contain the same courses, just in slightly different order. Um, select one block for your fall and one for your winter in order to properly register for the year. You can view the blocks at dal.ca slash registration. You're gonna go to find your courses, then course planning worksheets, then faculty of engineering. So that's where we went to, to just find the, the first year registration page. Um, so right below the actual first year registration sheet, you'll see two links. One's called engineering for fall registration blocks and the other one's called engineering winter blocks. Um, so if you click on those, you can browse the eight options for each term. 
Um, there are so many perks to block registration. It's quick and easy to do, uh, and it makes it easier to meet people and to find study groups because you're largely with the same people in the same classes throughout the term. So that can be uh, a huge benefit when it comes to, to studying. And uh, as you'll see, this is just an example of, of a block. Um, this is what one looks like. And so in this particular block here, we can see that um, the evenings on Wednesdays and Fridays are pretty open, a big chunk of time on Thursday. Um, so, you know, this is what this block would look like versus, say, uh, Oh, one second here. There's a second block here. And so you can see that it's just slightly different. So now Tuesday and Friday um, have big blocks of time. Um, so they, they're all a little bit different. And when you're thinking about selecting a block, here's some things that you can kind of ask yourself. So what time of day do you learn best? You might find that some of the blocks play better to your natural uh, time of day when you, when you learn best. Um, do you want breaks um, rather than having back-to-back -back classes? So some blocks might have more breaks in between classes. Some might be tighter, so that might come into it. Um, you know, do the break times actually work with your needs? So if you're in athletics, for instance, and there's uh, certain evenings in which there's going to be practice or a certain uh, away time schedule that you're going to have, that might play into it. Um, the short is there is no such thing as a block that is better than the other. Um, all blocks are created equal. Um, so we just recommend picking the one that best fits your lifestyle. And that's the one that will certainly be best for you. So before registration opens on June 10th, we encourage you to check your registration status to ensure you're good to go. Um, so we're going to go back into the ins and outs of actually how to register for a block. So you can do this by logging into your Dal Online account using your NetID and password. This is why we want you to set up that NetID and password ahead of time. Once inside, you're going to click on Web for Students. Click on registration and then click on prepare for registration. And that is going to take you to a screen where um, you can actually select your term. So you're going to set it to fall. That's how you'll be able to check whether or not uh, you're prepared for registration. And so if you come through, uh, this is what you should see when things are successful. So there should be three green check marks um, saying that your status permits registration, your academic standing permits registration, and that you have no holds. Everybody is going to have that big red thing at the bottom until registration actually opens on June 10th. Um, so that's totally fine. And it'll tell you that you are eligible to register at noon. Um, so that's what you should see. And that's how you know um, that you are ready to actually um, go ahead and register. And so now we're going to talk about how to go about registering for your block. Um, so by June 10th, you should have activated your NetID and password, checked your registration status, and you would have gone through the blocks and found the one that actually best meets your personal needs. On June 10th, when registration opens at 12 o'clock p.m. Atlantic time, you're going to log into Dow Online using your NetID and password, and then you're going to click on Web for Students. Next, you're going to click on Registration. And then you're going to click on register for classes. And then you're going to go to select a term and you're going to set it to fall and hit continue. So we always register for our fall term courses first. From the top of the screen, you're going to see that there is a link called block registration. And so you're going to click on that to see the full list of blocks, which will look like this. Um, and so all of the different block options will be there. You'll be able to scroll down and choose the one that works best for you. Um, and then you'll hit submit at the bottom of the screen to formally uh, submit it. In the bottom right hand screen, uh, you'll see that there's a summary section once you've submitted your block. Um, your courses will show up with pending written beside them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the, the submit button in the bottom right hand corner to actually complete registration. And once you press submit, the pending status will change to registered. And so this is what a successful registration looks like.
Once you have registered for your fall term, you will go back to the top of the screen where it'll say select term um, and you'll actually set the system to winter and then you'll go through and you'll register for your winter term block. It's important to register for both fall and winter uh, in order to be fully registered and so fall first and then of course we would do winter second. So that was just a little quick overview of the registration process for engineering students. But if you get lost at any time along the way, you can click the help button, which is available on any of the registration pages, and it'll take you to a series of videos that will demo and explain the registration process. These videos are all under two minutes, so they're very quick. And in fact, they're available now. So if you wanted to log in prior to registration and watch some of these videos, uh, you'll find possibly that that makes you feel uh, pretty prepared for registration. Um, so just go underneath help and look for the block registration video, and that will show you step by step uh, what you should be doing. If you receive an error message while you're trying to register for a block, it likely means that one or more of the classes inside your block is now full. That's why we recommend having a few backup blocks in mind, so maybe pick two to three that you'd be happy with. If you receive an error message while registering for a block, you should drop the whole block and just register for a completely new one. And so, um, right here you can see that I've got the status registered um, circled in red. If you look just beside it to the right, you'll see the action menu. So right now it says none inside the action menu, um, but if you click the little arrow beside it, it brings up a drop down menu and you can actually set the courses to drop. So if you find that there is an error in your block, um, something is full, just drop the whole block and just move on to, uh, to your second or third choice. And as you can see, um, as a reminder, when you have successfully registered it'll pop up and, and it'll have the green registered there for you and that's how you'll know uh, that everything went well. So that includes an overview of the registration process and of course if you have any questions at the end we would be delighted to answer them during the Q&A session. Again I also encourage you to visit the help menu inside DAL Online and to watch the video on block registration. It walks you through step by step everything you need to know. It's incredibly comprehensive and I know you'll be feeling very prepared uh, come June 10th if you do that. For now, I would like to pass you back over to our student guru, Charlie Forbes, who will introduce you to some of the fantastic resources and supports that you can access during your time at Dalhousie. Thank you, Tara. Um, let me just pull up my notes. Um, Okay, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about um, some of our supports for success at Dalhousie. Uh, so one of the first ones here um, is, yes, thank you, Tara, uh, the financial services. So this is through um, the Awards and Financial Aid Office at the Registrar's Office. Um, you're able to go to them and you can book appointments and they can help you with scholarship and bursary funding. So finding out what scholarships and bursaries you might be eligible for and how they work, uh, creating a budget for university funding and expenses um, and uh, accessing temporary loans for emergency situations. Um, there is uh, an emergency bursary that used to be through the visit and is now through them um, and connecting with on-campus and community services to assist you with um, different money uh, issues. So, um, oh, and a note that um, official tuitions and payments uh, go through the registrar's office. So this isn't where you go to like pay your tuition. Uh, it's more so like help with funding for school. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the Student Accessibility Center. I had mentioned it before in my slides. Uh, so maybe you had an IEP, an individual education plan uh, at your previous high school or your previous institution. Um, and so uh, they are able to give you access to assistive technologies and exam accommodations. Uh, you can speak to an accessibility advisor. They're really wonderful people. I, I you know, I'm glad to be able to work uh, closely with them sometimes. 
uh, they uh, you can gain access uh, speak to an advisor to create an accessibility plan. Like I mentioned, you might have called it something different than an individual education plan at your school, but to create like essentially an accessibility plan to ensure that your accessibility needs are met uh, and assist you in accessing disability related funding and connect you with resources on and off campus. So, um, you know, any, any accessibility uh, needs you might have, whether it's a learning disability, whether it's, you know, something more short term, like you broke your leg or something, they can, uh, you know, help you uh, navigate that uh, in your classrooms and on campus. Uh, next slide, please, Tara. Uh, so this is studying for success. Tara um, kind of briefly mentioned it earlier when talking about the Visit uh, Student Success Center in general, but um, they uh, host workshops on study skills such as concentration and time management. Uh, they also have one-on-one -on -one study coaching by discipline uh, for students struggling with academics. So I'd say like the student uh, studying for success office is really like about learning how to learn, which I, I feel like is an important skill. Sometimes people can you know, really handle high school just by, you know, kind of going off their own brains. And when they hit university, it's really important to like learn how to learn. Uh, it's definitely something I had to go through in university. And yeah, I'm grateful for, for supports like this. And another thing that study for studying for success does is connect students with tutors as well. Um, so the next slide, please, Tara. Um, the International Center is another great space. So Maybe you are, um, you know, coming from a different country uh, than Canada. The International Center is a great place to go. Um, you can also, if you are, you know, uh, a student, uh, you know, from Canada, you can also explore um, the uh, Dalhousie's Exchange and Study Abroad opportunities. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're an international student, they are. We have trained, uh, you know. Uh, visa advisors who can help you with uh, immigration, student visas, filing Canadian taxes. Uh, there's also access to different English as another language supports and connection, connecting with international community on campus and off campus. So, you know, I'm a student from Canada, but I have seen that they have a lot of great cultural events. Uh, you know, you never knew, know when there's going to be great food there. So, um, yeah, keep your eye on that place. Um, and next slide, please. Um, another great center here is the Black Student Advising Center. Uh, so uh, there's support such as, uh, you know, they can help with advising, advocacy, and mentorship. Um, it's just a great place to kind of find community uh, and uh, attend student and community events. So they are, are in this cute little blue cottage at, um, you know, uh, on the main campus. And another thing in that building is the Indigenous Student Center. Uh, so this place is actually in the same building as the Black Student Advising Center. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, it's a great place to connect with advisors, uh, you know, get support, uh, connect with, uh, you know, community if you're, you know, new to Halifax, and engage with different uh, Indigenous cultural activities. So, of course, this is for Indigenous students from a multitude of backgrounds, but also, um, you know, I as a non-Indigenous student really enjoyed, um, you know, past October, there was the Maui Omi uh, festival going on on the grounds, and everyone participated. They had soup, they had dancing, like, all around, it was just a nice time. So, uh, yeah, you can also in attend information sessions about Indigenous education networking. Uh, so I'm just going to take a sip of water, and then we'll go to the next slide. Uh, so the next slide is... Um, something I'm excited to tell you about because we this slide was almost blank last year because we just hired um, the Dalhousie LG, 2S LGBTQ advisor. So um, similarly, uh, you can access support services, advising, advocacy, and mentorship for 2S LGBTQ students. They can, uh, Olivia can uh, access, uh, help you access and uh, referrals for gender affirming care. And also a big thing she's been doing this year is supporting uh, students uh, who are changing their names and gender markers at Dalhousie. So we have a lot of different, you know, software systems within Dalhousie, and it's hard to just click a button and change your name. So she can be very helpful with that. Uh, and also just get connected with student societies such as Dal Out and community groups and navigating services at Dalhousie. Uh, so those are some of the great like community uh, kind of centers and uh, connections there. Um, then another resource here that we have is the Dahazi Bookstore. Um, so the bookstore, you'll all end up at the bookstore at some point. Uh, this is where you buy all your textbooks for uh, courses. 
Uh, you can actually, I believe there's an option to um, order some textbooks ahead of ahead of time so they can be ready for you when you get here in September or August. Um, and, uh, you know, it's also a great place to get Dalhousie gear like sweaters and mugs and uh, purchase things for if you're living in residence, uh, pick up school supplies, they always have cute notebooks. And um, so that is actually in the basement of the student union building and we are at the top floor. So uh, the other end of the elevator and uh, one of the last supports we wanted to talk about was the Student Health and Wellness Center. Um, yes, perfect. Uh, so this is basically Dalhousie's on-campus clinic. Um, all the students have access to it. And, uh, you know, you can book medical appointments with doctors, with nurses, with um, counselors. They also do same-day counseling, um, which is important and, you know, reach out if you feel like you need to reach out. Uh, you can also speak to a social worker uh, to navigate different resources and, uh, you know, speak about challenges you've had. Uh, and, you know, also a good place to get flu shots, prescriptions, medical testing, you know, when you're packed in a classroom with a bunch of people, uh, there's bound to be a flu season. So, um, yeah, that's a great place to go on campus. Um, what's on this? Yes. Yeah, so this is just where you find these services. So if you go uh, to the main Dalhousie website, you click current students where this uh, red circle is, and that'll bring up services for current students uh, where you can find kind of all the services I just talked about. And next slide, please, Tara. Uh, oh, there, it didn't switch me. Uh, so Dell Mobile is just like, um, you know, an online app. You can download it on your phone, um, you know, you can uh, meet classmates, ask questions, connect to campus resources. And I'd say one of the main things that people use Dow Mobile for is to find out if the campus is open on a really snowy day. Uh, so if you ever need to know whether the campus is open or not, that's a good place to go. Uh, and then next is, uh, oh, just uh, the Visit Student Success Center's um, social medias. So, uh, yeah, you can follow us on, usually we're most active on Instagram. It's me and the other peer advisors running it. So come say hi. And yeah, I'm going to pass it back to, get, uh, to Tara to talk about Together Adele. Thank you so much, Charlie. Yeah, so Together Adele is near and dear to my heart um, because I am the advisor for students who join the Together Adele program. Um, so Together Adele is a free mentorship program that pairs first year students with an upper year mentor who can provide advice and guidance on navigating student life and university support services. Um, and then, of course, as a Together Adele student, you would have access to myself, a designated academic advisor who helps students work through a program called Stay on Track. And Stay on Track is really a program that allows us to sit down and develop a success plan for all four years of university. Um, so what engineering streams are you thinking of? You know, what sort of things can you be doing over the course of your university education to make yourself more attractive to employers? If you run into some problems as you're moving through your degree, let's create a success plan and incorporate some support services to get you back on track. Um, so if this is something that would be of interest to you, you can go to dal.com ca slash together to register. Um, there's nothing special that's going to happen over the course of the summer, um, but we'll be reaching out in the fall and I'll be booking my one on one sessions with students and the one on one sessions usually happen at least once per month. Um, so if you're somebody who feels like you could benefit from some some more one on one guidance on an ongoing basis uh, together at Dal and the stay on track program might be for you. So hopefully I will get to uh, to see you all as a part of that program. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of our webinar today. So let's just recap some of the important things to keep in mind. So registration opens up this Saturday, June 10th, beginning at 12 o'clock p.m. Atlantic time. So if you're not in the Atlantic region, be sure to note the time change um, and to register uh, at that time. Uh, the $200 deposit is required before you can register and it can take up to 48 hours to process. Um, so that means if you have yet to pay your $200 deposit and you want to register for that 
chosen block that means a lot to you that you'll probably want to get that paid no later than this Wednesday. And then you'll need to activate your NetID and create your password so that you can log into DAL online and my DAL, which is your email. And so dal.ca slash password is where you're going to go to do those things. We are going to have supports available for you. If you encounter any registration errors on the day that seem out of the ordinary, the registrar's office will be available to assist. They won't be able to help you with course planning, so it is important um, that you do that work ahead of time, but they will support you um, through registration errors. So they're going to be open from 1130 until 4 o'clock p.m. on June 10th, and they'll be available by a chat, phone, or email. Uh, the busiest period is going to be 12 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock. So, you know, please keep that in mind when planning when you're actually going to give them a shout. Uh, the registrar's office is home to a few different offices that might be of interest to you. Um, so the admission office is one. Perhaps you're somebody who is currently still on the wait list for engineering, but you're keen to get in and you're here today. If you have any questions about that, you can contact them for your status. Uh, for the awards and financial aid office, if you've got scholarships or bursary questions, that office can help. They're also great if you want to have a chat about understanding your student loan or budgeting for a successful first year, um, they can be very helpful for that. Um, in terms of transfer credits, they've got the transfer credit team as well. And the transfer credit team conducts all assessments on transfer credits. And so if you've got any questions about your transfer credit assessment or what you might be eligible for, um, you can definitely uh, reach out to the transfer credit team at transfercredits at dal.ca. We in the Bissett Student Successor are also going to be available to you on June 10th. We're going to be opened from um, 11 a.m. until 4 o'clock p.m. Atlantic time um, for anybody who has course planning questions. Um, now, we're not registration error gurus like our registrar friends, but if you are wondering about what block you need and you haven't had a chance to have a look at it and you want some guidance, you can certainly reach out to us. Because you're engineering students and you do have block registration, you likely won't require Require our services as much as some students, um, but we will be around and we can certainly be reached at 902-494-3077 if that's of interest to you. Um, so what happens when you call our office is you will be put on um, our callback list and then the first available advisor will quickly call you back to provide advising support. This summer, we want you to stay in touch, so don't just register and disappear on us. Um, we really love you to engage, and a good way to do that is to visit dal.ca slash new students. Um, there are some really helpful checklists on what to pack and how to prepare for your move to Halifax or just your move to residence or just coming to campus every day if you're a local student. Um, a lot of helpful tips on a lot of things are kept there from study skills, uh, you name it, it's going to be there. Uh, that's where a lot of the orientation information is going to be as well, including information for family and friends who may be supporting you um, through your education. So it's good maybe to share that link with whoever supports you through your educational journey so they can do that effectively. And then there's also going to be a virtual tour if you've not toured or you just want to daydream about all of the lovely spaces on campus, which I wouldn't blame you if you did, um, that uh, is available to you. So. We are now going to open the floor to a chat very soon. Um, Chris is actually going to throw a survey into the chat for you, and it would mean so much to us if you could take a moment just to evaluate how we did here for you today. We take any feedback that you provide and we put it into making an even stronger presentation for students next year. So anything you, you can tell us, um, we would really appreciate. Um, but for now, we are going to open the floor to questions, so I'm going to turn you over to Chris Vickers, uh, who is going to moderate the question and answer period for us today. Uh, and it has been a pleasure uh, presenting to you today. And I look forward to welcoming you all to campus this fall. Thank you so much, Tara. So thankfully, there actually isn't much to moderate on my end. You guys have done such a wonderful job this evening. The entire panel has chimed in and answered questions. Uh, as I'm saying this, by the way, my lights are flickering at my house here. So if the power does go off, I do apologize. I hope it stays on, but just wanted to put that out there because you see my screen go dark all of a sudden. 
Uh, there are just two questions of general interest that are left that are not answered. So I might just start with those and then we will uh, maybe wait for a couple more questions to come in as we uh, say what those are. Uh, maybe I'll go with the second question that came in first because it just might be easier to answer, it might be a quicker answer, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the question is, can you see the blocks before your registration opens? So someone's asking if they can see the blocks where registration opens. So maybe answer is that one. Yes, I'll take that for you. So um, you can see the blocks um, right now by just going, um, if you go to, um, we have a page, this is the easiest way to do it. So if you go to the main Dalhousie webpage um, and in the search engine on the far right hand corner, type in register on track. Um, it'll take you to the register on track first year page. So you'll hit enter and it'll say register on track new students. You'll click on that. And then if you scroll to the bottom of that page, you'll see course planning worksheets. And so if you click on course planning worksheets and then you click on engineering, we have all of the blocks listed there for you. So you're going to be able to see them ahead of time. You won't be able to log into the system and go underneath registration and go in and look at them that way. That won't be open until registration opens, but you'll be able to actually browse that little catalog, if you will, uh, of options for both fall and winter and figure out which blocks you want well in advance of registration. That was a great question. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, a question that came in before that one was about the lifestyle in year one. Uh, for those who have done the IB program, they, they've heard that it could be uh, a little bit easier but just wanted some kind of guidance or input. That might be a really tough question to kind of maybe answer directly, but Jason might be able to start us off yeah. there uh, and then we'll uh, chime in with others. So maybe Jason, go ahead. Sure, so one of the benefits of the Unibaccalaureate program or advanced placement or A-levels uh, from the UK systems is that it can give you transfer credit. And so obviously if you get transfer credit for chemistry, that's one less class you have to take in the fall and winter. So in that way, it can be a real benefit. Um, the one thing I would say about IB, IB, AP, A levels is, while you may have been exposed to a lot of the topics, you have not been tested by university instructors. Mm -hmm. So do not let overconfidence be your downfall. You probably don't know uh, quite as much as you think you do coming in with IB, because I have seen IB students go in a variety of directions when they get to Dow. So that would be what I would say is it's a great preparation. Topically, you're going to have exposure to a lot of stuff you're going to see in first year. If you have transfer credits, take advantage of them where they make sense. Um, but don't let it uh, spell your doom because you decide, you know what, I don't have to do anything for the first three months of class. And you'll be in my office talking to me about everything that went wrong afterwards. So good and bad, a double-edged sword, hmm. so to speak. Great advice there. Uh, I know Justin, you had your hand up, but maybe Jason tackled that question there for you. He did. I just wanted to add, I think he put it best when he said it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You know, my experience working with students that went through the IB program in the past is that, um, you know, maybe they will come in a, a little bit more prepared, but again, it's not to say that, you know, maybe don't let your guard down is, is what I'm getting at. You know, stay on top of your work in your first year. And um, as beneficial as the, the IB program is, and it is very beneficial, um, I think Jason Jason put it best when when saying that you haven't been tested yet from from a university level professors, um, and a lot of the time I think the best approach there would be you know coming in with those credits maybe and uh, getting a head start while also working hard towards your goals. So while it can kind of reduce the the, the amount of your degree, I wouldn't look at it that way. I would, I would almost look at it as mm -hmm. you know I'm coming here with a leg up and I'm going to continue working hard towards towards my degree here. So. Um, great program and it's a, a really good option and it does prepare you, but definitely don't let your guard down when you get uh, to your first year and, and continue to work hard. Yeah, great advice there. I have a friend who's actually a prof in the engineering program and he says to anyone, it's a lot of work. Uh, so even if you do take a reduced course load, you take some credits, uh, you're still lots to do, lots to learn. And the, and the learning curve is quite different at university than it is in the IB program at times. Not saying that to scare any of you, I'm just Kind of stating the fact that it can be a challenging program and quite rigorous uh, if you're not prepared for it. So great advice from Jason and Justin there. Uh, next question that just came in uh, might be one for, I'm not sure, no, yeah. uh, buying textbooks. Can I buy used books and where do I find used books? Daryl, Dr. Dorman, yeah, go ahead. 
Hi, uh, sorry. I just uh, just on the. I mean, I, I normally teach second year classes, and uh, just as a kind of blanket statement for all the students out there, a lot of the fundamental classes that you'll take in year one and year two, uh, you know, things like statics haven't changed in a hundred years. Uh, before you purchase that book, because I see a lot of students in the classes that I teach sort of get into this mistake. They're they're very organized. They buy uh, an older version before the class starts or before the syllabus comes up. The only problem you'll run into is some courses have assignments from problems in the book. And what the publishers do is they shuffle around um, kind of what the questions look like, what order and whatnot. So it creates a little bit of extra work for students. The best thing to do I would recommend is buy your book after talking to the, to the course instructor. And, and so I recommend in my classes, I don't use the, the problems from the book. So I tell them buy the oldest book that will hold together for as long as you need it and save yourself some money. Um, but it's really worthwhile making sure you contact the course instructor and say, you know, I'm thinking of buying an older used version. Is that going to be a problem? What's the current version? Um, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, someone's asking where the building is located on the timetable. I don't know if we actually actually physically looked at that on the on the slide deck there, but uh, in the timetable, when you go select your course options, typically there is a uh, an option right in the center of that table that says locations. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe Tara, do you? I, I see you're still sharing your screen there. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, you can go ahead and take that question if you like. Sure. Once you have actually completed your block registration, a schedule is going to show up on the left hand side of the screen. And if you look at the schedule, um, it'll actually have all of the days, times and room locations for everything. So that'll be on your actual schedule once you've registered. And uh, all of the blocks were put together to ensure that there's ample time to get from point A to point B. So that's not something that you need to worry about when choosing a block. Um, but certainly once you've registered, all of the all the locations will be present there. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, next question. All of the timetable uh, on the timetable on all timetable at time 1800 there for CPFT. What does that? I'm not really sure. I, under, I actually grasped that question. Maybe Jason can chime in there. Maybe he gets that one. <laughs> so it's CPST 1103 in the fall, oh, okay. and CPST 1203 in the winter. So there's 13 rooms assigned for those tutorials, and the software that they use to make that schedule does not parse that in a way that humans understand very well. And I don't have time, I didn't have time to uh, make it pretty for you. So okay. the the information that you need to know is when you see those b -b 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 blocks in the 1600 time frame, it's just your technical communications uh, tutorial. Okay. Um, and then the next one, I'm not sure if you can see, if you see it there, uh, Jason or uh, whoever wants to maybe tackle that one. It's about students doing the diploma in meteorology after the bachelor's degree in engineering. Um, I think that it would be a very hard program to do. The diploma would be very hard to integrate within the Bachelor of Engineering just because of the structure of it. So it may be something you need to do uh, as a supplement after the degree is complete uh, for that one because it's quite specific. But I'm not sure if any of you have any experience with students asking to do uh, other diplomas or programs on top of the engineering degree. We do have something called concurrent degrees. Yeah, where that one. Yeah. Students would submit an application to the Bachelor of Engineering and the Bachelor of Science um, would be admitted to both. Um, people don't typically do that right out of their first year uh, or, or heading mm. into their first year. It's usually something that we explore um, in the transition from, from first to second year. It, uh, it's something, it's very individualized. And so what I mean by that is both the deans from each of the faculties have to agree to it. Um, and then how long it takes you to complete it really depends on um, the advisors from, from each division sitting down and figuring out sort of what the curriculum is gonna look like for their individual sections of it. Um, but that is what happens. It's it's worked out special in, in, mm -hmm. in 
you know, individual circumstances. And that's certainly something that you can explore um, either with me through the Stay on Track program or through yep. Jason um, heading through your first year. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, yeah, and I would just say from that standpoint, this is where the registrar would uh, office would step in and help you with the supporting that process. If you need to add, for example, do the concurrent program, our team at the registrar's office would support some of that work. And then you would rely on your advisors to kind of construct the course plan to meet those goals essentially of, of the program pathway. Uh, we're gonna, ha we have the Mac versus PC preference option question. So I'm not sure if someone wants to tackle Mac or PC or does it matter uh, for the engineering program? I'm gonna give that question to Jason, but it's also covered in the registration guide as well. Sure. So. I would, the only thing I would say about Max, understand emulation, okay? So if you know how to emulate Windows on a Mac, you can probably make your Mac work with anything. If when I say Windows emulation, you go, what in the world does that mean? Eh. I mean, that's something you'll probably wanna learn. So a lot of the, the, the course specific programs that you're gonna use work best in a PC environment. So they work natively on PC. You may have to do quite a bit of work on your own, in order to figure out how to run that software on your laptop if it happens to be a Mac. Um, not all Macs can emulate PCs anymore, but I think a, a large number of them still can. Uh, and we do have many, many students every year who go through all five years of the program, four years, five years of the program with a Mac. You just might have to use a, a lab PC once in a while for when you absolutely need to use a PC. It can probably be done, but yes, it will be mildly inconvenient, just like you should be used to as a Mac user uh, anytime you interact with a major organization. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the next question I'll tackle just quickly about the, someone's asking about the transfer credits and how that impacts GPA. So essentially transfer credits awarded for courses that are like IB, AP, the British system, uh, those are added to the student record and they, they have a grade of TR and they don't affect your GPA value at Dow. Only your Dow performance is calculated in your grade point average. That's probably the simplest way to put it, um, but you'll see a notation of the credit, for example, like say AP chemistry, the grade will be noted as TR. It'll show a 0, 0.0 GPA value. That's not because you got a zero, it's because that doesn't get calculated inside of your Dalhousie GPA. Only courses you take at Dalhousie are going to be counted towards your Dalhousie GPA. So it's a neutral impact. Uh, next question is, can I change my block for the winter term? I'm assuming the question here is if they wanted to do a different one from fall to winter. Uh, maybe we can get someone to tackle that one. Yep, that's correct. So you can, you don't have to have the same schedule for your fall as you do for the winter. So you might find that one of the blocks works best for you for the fall. Another one might be better for the winter. So feel free to choose the block that works best for you for each term. They don't need to be the same. Excellent. And the last one that's open is it was for me. I answered it and a typed question. I'll just answer for Evan really quickly. So yeah, likely what you did whenever you selected your term, you maybe selected the term like either the winter or a term that you weren't admitted to directly. So if you see the green status or that you're able to register on June 10th, you should be good to go. If anything happens that doesn't make sense or it's not clear to you, feel free to just send me an email. My email is just in the chat box or in my in my camera here. Uh, but I think you should be good to go. It's just sometimes you got to select the term you want to register for. And maybe, uh, yeah, Karen will uh, chime in here. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to move on a little bit past that one. I, I think that that one's been uh, covered sufficiently. I didn't want to put Naya on the spot or anything, but I also sure. didn't want to leave Naya sure. conversation. So I was wondering if Naya wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the ways you've been involved in in um, in des so far and in stu student life so far different ways that you've been um, engaging and and participating in school do you want to talk about that for a minute yeah okay. for sure uh so hi everyone i'm naya i use she her pronouns i'm the president of des this year which is the diploma of engineering society so if you're in first or second year engineering you're a member of des uh, so I got involved in first year. I joined as a first year representative, uh, which was pretty cool. Like I just got to go to meetings, um, 
see what it was about. I got to like help out a little. So definitely a really great way to get involved if you're looking for it. And something that I found very beneficial about it is I got to meet like a lot of like second year students. So then I could like ask them my questions, ask them for advice. They were really a great resource. Uh, so I definitely recommend getting involved. There's also the Student Affairs Committee, as Karen, I think, mentioned earlier. Um, so if you have, if you want to bring up your academic concerns or like help improve uh, your courses for all of your peers, definitely like that's something to check out. Uh, and then there's also a lot of design teams. Um, which I think is really cool. Like Dalhousie has so many options for that. Uh, so I'm a member of the autonomous underwater vehicle team. And I joined in first year. And I think a lot of first years are like scared to do it. Like I know a lot of my friends were at first, but honestly, I'd say go for it because everyone there in your extracurricular activities really just wants to help you succeed and to learn. And I definitely think Think that it really add a layer outside room um, because you're like getting involved and you're doing stuff, meeting people, talking to people, working with people, problem solving, which, yeah, that's what engineering is, is problem solving. Excellent. Thank you. And I've shared the link in the uh, chat for the society as well. So if students want to go access that just to kind of explore a bit more. Uh, I did put the link in the chat uh, in the Zoom, uh, so feel free to go navigate that as well too. Uh, just seeing a question that popped in here, not sorry not to cut you off, Naya, but uh, just seeing one about asking about if the math classes allow calculators in it. Uh, they do Calculus 30, uh, it's basically Calculus Grade 12 in Saskatchewan. They, they're not allowed to use calculators. They just want to know how the calculator, what the calculator policy will be uh, in the maybe in the in the math. Go ahead, Naya. Yeah, um, so for most of it, like for assignments, you could use it, but during tests, most tests, you could not use calculators, but it's okay. specifically designed so that the math you're doing, like you can do without a calculator, it's not impossible. And I think there were certain tests where we were allowed to use like a calculator for a specific question. Excellent. So uh, that is the end of the open questions. Uh, we're maybe going to give it maybe another minute or so and see if any uh, last minute uh, questions pop through. But I'm not sure um, if anyone else from the panel has anything they would like to add in the meantime before we wrap things up here. Uh, again, uh, I will share, uh, if you haven't done so yet, yeah, maybe a quick reminder as I think about another question here. Uh, just to go to the satisfaction survey uh, that's in the chat. You click that link just to answer the survey to see how the session was for you tonight. So that'd be greatly appreciated if you could fill out that survey. And I see Jason raised his hand here. So I'll just let Jason uh, chime in. So this is my sneaky way of getting you to go read the engineering first year handbook. Page 11 has the answer to the question about calculators. So there are a few classes in engineering that do require a specific calculator. Go to page 11 of the first year handbook and your answers will be given there. So that's go.engineering.dal.ca slash FY guide. And I think I've shared that link previously, but I'll put the I'll put it back in the chat just so it's top of mind here. Again, I'll do that in a, in a moment here. I'm getting a lot of questions about calculators again. Again, page 11 is your best friend there, according, according to Jason. Uh, scientific or graphic calculators or should I get graphing calculators? I think the calculator question there is on page 11. So I'll just let those questions uh, answer themselves based on that guide. And I'll share the link again in the chat here momentarily. Uh, and then one more question that just came in as we were talking here, will there be a lots of essay assignments in engineering? I'm maybe thinking maybe the first year might just be, but Naya, if I pick that one up. Yeah, go ahead, Naya. Um, not many essays. I don't think I wrote any essays in first year. You do have like two big writing assignments for your technical communications class. So in fall semester, you have a technology report. Um, which is like paragraphs and it's long kind of like an essay, but I'd say it's not, in my opinion, it's not as hard. Um, 
and you're also like you get to pick the topic it's pretty okay and yeah not an actual essay and then in the winter semester you write a recommendation report which again you're writing paragraphs so in that way it's similar to an essay but it's definitely different than an essay awesome thank you so much for that so just a reminder again, before we wrap things up here, I just see or again, we're at the uh, zero questions in the open category. So I'll take that as uh, we're probably gonna be wrapping up here shortly. Uh, this session has been recorded this evening. We'll be posting a link to it uh, via the register, uh, the dial.ca slash on track website. If you wanna go watch any part of this later on, you can feel free to go back to that site, uh, dial.ca slash on track. And there's information there about where the sessions were hosted this evening. Uh, you would have registered on that link, but now we'll have a link posted to this recording uh, in the next uh, day or so. So keep an eye out for that. If you missed anything tonight and you wanted to kind of connect with something or something didn't really get answered the way you thought, uh, my email is just in the video box here. You can feel free to send that question to me, even if it's for the panelists in the room, I'll be happy to uh, send them along to whoever they need to go to uh, in order to ensure that you have your questions answered as well. Um, I'll leave my part of that and I'll just let Karen step back in here. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I just wanted to direct everyone's attention to dellenge.ca. That's a really good resource. It's a student-led, it's the diploma, it's not the diploma in engineering, it's not NIA's group. It's uh, Sarah Hall is the president of DUES, which is all of the undergrad, which NIA's group would fall under that. Um, and as she said, that they you're just naturally part of that as a first year student. Um, so you can click around there, find women in engineering, engi queers special interest groups, you'll find information about all the design teams that I was talking about. Um, it's it's a really good resource. There's a tutoring program that's subsidized um, through that um, for, for your first year courses. Um, yeah, just take take a look around there and, and you might uh, you might be surprised that you'll find a special interest group that is interesting to you. So thanks. Excellent, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, the, the uh, Q&A box is empty at this point. So we'll take it as a sign that we're wrapped up. We've already been at this for a little while. So I would like to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, just another quick shout out for the uh, survey. First of all, if you haven't done that, go into the chat. I'll give you another 30 seconds to access that. Uh, satisfaction survey just helps us to know if these things are useful and whether or not we can improve in any area. So feel free to do that at Dell. Uh, just go to the chat box, sorry, and you can access the link there too. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if Tara or anyone else wants to add anything before we wrap up, but otherwise, um, I am going to take it as a cue here. I'm just going to give me another 15 seconds to go through the chat, uh, get the links you need. Uh, if you do miss anything, just grab my email right there, and I'll be happy to send that to you after the session is over this evening. Uh, I see uh, Jason's hand went up there, so maybe I'll let Jason uh, chime in with the uh, final thoughts. <laughs> so registration is on Saturday, starts at 12. My recommendation to everyone here who's still here, register right away. Um, there are no overrides for exceeding maximum occupancy. So if a block is full, it's full. It doesn't matter if your best friend's in the block or not. Um, you have to register for a block that has seats in it. So that's the only uh, last thing I just wanted to mention before we signed off. Might save us all some emails. Yeah. If a block is full, it's full. Mm -hmm. Register for a different block. Great advice to end off. So thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Uh, reach out to us anytime leading up to registration. They will be happy to help you out uh, and take good care. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everyone.